Well, we've been talking about a very active market session here on the first trading day of April. That's right. We're already into month five of 2017. And we're kicking things off with a bang here in the grain trade. Lots of gains everywhere you look today. Let's find out what's going on in the market by going there directly. Let's go check in with Tim Evans. Tim happens to be with uh, Longleaf Trading Incorporated. And uh, he uh, talks with us directly from the trading floor at the CME Group right now. All right, Tim, I want to run through these futures trades here with you and get your comment on what we're seeing take place. In the corn market at last check, we'll pull up our futures double digit gains here on the nearby contracts. We have the July 12 and a quarter higher now at 378 and three quarters. That's only one tick from our high of the day, the December 10 and a half higher at 395 and a half. Only one tick from its high of the day. Soybean trade today, we have that July contract now up 17 and three quarters at 974. That's within a penny of its high of the day. We're off our low by nearly 16 cents now. Uh, November soybeans, 15 and a half higher at 968 and three quarters. And if we look at that wheat market, that's the one that kind of got the ball rolling today. We have the July Chicago wheat gaining 23 and three quarter cents right now at 456 even. That's only one tick from its high of the session. And Kansas City wheat where they had all the snow and the high wind over the weekend. Well, we have the July contract now up 28 and three quarter cents at 466. That's, uh, it has been as high as 29 cents higher. I will remind you, there's only a 30 cent trading limit, I believe, on the Kansas City wheat. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. And on the Minneapolis wheat trade, we have July currently trading at 568. That is 13 and a quarter higher. And for good measure, we'll throw in the cotton, no extra charge. Uh, July now up 11 points at 78.98 per pound after being on both sides of unchanged. Now, Tim, want to get your thoughts. Let's talk first about this wheat market here. We're getting up there in the neighborhood of going limit up today. Yeah, I mean, uh, the grains, the grain space as a whole has obviously been in dire need of some some bullish news and uh, Mother Nature definitely delivered that uh, here this weekend. So, yeah, I mean, wheat, wheat is leading the whole the whole complex higher given given the, the weather developments over the weekend. It's really hard for producers out in farm country that are affected by all this to believe that the traders were caught off guard by that, that, that you know, they can't believe they didn't build that in before the weekend because everybody's been talking about it for several days. Well, I mean, the commitment of traders reports, uh, you know, has been showing a, a record uh, short position in in wheat. Uh, we, and there's a huge short position in corn as well. So, you know, the the math is pretty simple. I mean, the, the funds have been piling on the short side and been adding to that short position. And uh, clearly, uh, there's some regret, I'm sure, for a number of those traders here are coming into the trading session today. You think they're lightening up on those positions today? Can you tell? Uh, to say the least, I mean, I, you know, I'll have to see what the open interest numbers look like at the end of the day to see, you know, what the how the volume ultimately impacted open interest. But I would, I would clearly imagine we're going to see a decline in open interest uh, when those numbers are, the official release come to that at the close today. Yeah, I wondered how often we get a commitment of traders update. Uh, on a weekly basis, and the numbers that we get are are delayed. Uh, like for example, the numbers that I just shared with you are uh, on a close on the close of uh, April 25th. Um, so it, it takes a, uh, another week before you see officially how the market responded. But the open interest numbers will give you a pretty good sign of kind of what that activity looked like. And I, I'd suspect a good amount of the trading volume in corn, uh, especially in corn and wheat today, are are is significant short covering. Well, the 2017 edition of the Kansas Wheat Quality Tour gets underway tomorrow. I believe they yeah. all meet uh, in northeast Kansas tonight and get ready to take off early in the morning. And that will be a fascinating one. The world will be watching for sure. Uh, Tim, if you don't mind, I'll bring you back here in just a little bit. And we'll talk a little about this uh, cattle and hog market as well. We're talking with Tim Evans of Longleaf Trading. And we'll have more with Tim right after this. When we changed the way we thought about work, about style and about tractors. We change the game. The tractor that started it all is changing it all. From the pioneering leaders that created the subcompact tractor comes the all new Kubota BX80 series.
Western sports are completely grounded in agriculture. I mean, it goes hand in hand. So it's a perfect fit for RFD TV to have lots of coverage of Western sports. Highlights of the past week in Western sports and what's next on the circuit. Western Sports Weekly with Amy Wilson. Wednesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, only on RFD TV. This portion of the Market Day Report is brought to you by AgriLiquid Fertilizer, committed to industry leadership and principles and practices of responsible nutrient management. Let's continue our talk with Tim Evans of Longleaf Trading. He's at the edge of the CME Group trading floor in Chicago. All right, Tim, let's look at the futures on the cattle complex right now. And we'll start with the live cattle board. Currently, now everything is back on the minus side again. It's been kind of a yo-yo affair here on either side of Unchanged today. Right now, you have your June live cattle down 25. Last trade, 123.77. Um, now we're uh, down there just within one tick of our low of the day. We have the August contract down 27 at 119.82. Uh, make that 23 lower right now. So that's within about 30 cents of its low of the day. Well off its earlier high by uh, over a dollar, about a dollar 30 from its high. October down. 62 cents. Now, if you flip over to the feeder cattle side, you now have the uh, August contract down at $1.67 at $153.03. And that is now three and a half dollars basically off our earlier high of the day. But a turnaround there. We have September down $1.80 at $152.85. So at times it looked like we were going to see some follow through buying a couple different times during the day so far. After we had a very strong close Friday, it didn't seem to hold water today. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the move that we've gotten here, I mean, I definitely think it's justified. You know, obviously, uh, you know, cash, if we go back a week ago, you know, remember the market was kind of doing some back and fill price action while cash prices were really being focused on. Cash prices have, you know, improved from that time to now. So, I mean, I think the move that we've gotten uh, to this point in live cattle is definitely justified. But, uh, you know, I think the price levels, especially from a technical standpoint, I think it's going to leave the market susceptible to a pullback. Um, you know, we're, we're we're in kind of that rare technical zone that it's going to require, uh, you know, a, a lot of buying to keep this rally going. Um, so, I mean, we're, you know, we're actually positioning here on the short side against this rally today. We, we think we're due for a, a roughly three cent pullback here over the first couple of trading days this week. Okay. Now I want to run through the latest uh, choice uh, and uh, select cutout values from USDA. It's the midday beef cut out update and choice cuts this morning were up $2.42 they were priced at 224.20 per hundredweight selects were up $1.32 they were priced at 209 even per hundredweight that spread between the two now stands at $15.20 so I wanted to point that out that's the second day in a row that we've seen some very strong gains in the uh, wholesale beef trade there also uh, we had some pork carcass cut out value numbers that came out according to USDA and we can run through those numbers too on the pork carcasses, we were 43 cents higher this morning on the midday update. The price was 74.89 per hundred. Loin market actually went down over two dollars in value. It was priced at 73.79, and you had the hams down 90 cents. Then, on the other hand, <coughs> excuse me, you had the belly market actually going up four dollars 28 cents this morning, and it was priced at 110.35. So, uh, going both directions at the same time here on the primal cuts in the pork. I don't know if you uh, put more weight on what's going on in the bellies or in the carcass values there. Well, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the general themes in the market. You know, we're, we're seeing those numbers come in mixed today. I mean, if you know, if we look at go back in time here and look at really what's driven this pork market, you know, over there over the last six, eight months when we were when we were rallying, obviously the bellies were the main driver of that. And I, I think the structural component of the market is still the same. So I, I would tend to weight bellies a little more. But uh, I think the broader themes in the market have been supportive, you know, for uh, pork products as a whole. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about this last week where, you know, I think that might have been suggesting a little better demand than what the market had been pricing in. And then we saw those numbers begin to improve. And, you know, I think that explains a lot of the market movement we had last week in, in the lean hog uh, space. Um, you know, so I think we're, we're ultimately seeing some decent uh, domestic demand. 
Um, we're also looking at exports. I mean, they're up 8.1 percent relative to last year. Uh, and there also is a lot of speculation here at the, at the exchange, you know, that a lot of that demand that we've seen go in record pace to China, most of that's been coming from Europe and Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, we think based on the price differentials that have changed here over the last month, that we could see some of that demand coming from the United States, which would obviously, you know, I think that would put a seasonal bottom in here for the hog market. All right. So hogs are down about 83 cents in value right now. Tim, good stuff. Thanks a bunch. I appreciate it. Tim Evans with Longleaf Trading in Chicago. So market downward.